The title of the message tonight is To Where Do You Belong? To Where Do You Belong? Philippians chapter 3, verse 20 and 21. For our conversion is in heaven. For whence also we look for the Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ, who shall change our vile body, that it may be fashioned like unto His glorious body, according to the working whereby He is able even to subdue all things. Commentary I read that, uh, 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 with this scripture I read today it was, uh, was uh, the Holmes Bible uh, commentary. And it said this, For our citizenship is in heaven, from which we also eagerly wait for the Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ, that He will transform our bodies uh, of our humble condition in the likeness of His glorious body by the power that enables Him to subject Himself why did Holmes use that word, uh, amen, citizenship? Uh, so I went back in the original Greek text uh, of the King James Bible. I looked that word up in verse, and it simply meant this. Uh, the word uh, in the Greek is polylithiome, which means citizenship, amen. So he had it right when he said it's a citizenship. Our citizenship uh, is up in heaven. On this earth, we are subject to the to the, uh, uh, the immoral laws of mankind. We're subject to the unrighteousness. We're subject uh, unto the unjust, the dead spirit of mankind. Uh, amen. We're, we're subject to the political correctness of this generation. Offend someone about whatever you say, it's going to be an offense to someone. Uh, our president last night refused to call uh, terrorism terrorism. Uh, amen. Uh, he even downplayed it and said that it's not as big a biggest fear as what people are making like it is. Uh, at the same time, uh, just hours before, Obama set off in Istanbul uh, and it killed by erratic. Uh, by radical Muslims, it didn't kill a bunch of folks. Amen. Uh, Christians are being beheaded for the cause of Christ. Uh, but I will let you know their citizenship might have had a piece of paper down here. But when they get to heaven, there's a different citizenship uh, uh, in heaven. Uh, we might have to deal with the corruption of this unjust world. Uh, but I want to give you hope tonight. Amen. Uh, hallelujah. We don't belong to this world. We're just strangers and pilgrims uh, that are in this world. Uh, this world has been awakened to the fact of. Uh, but refuses to accept the fact that it is lost and it needs a Savior. And there is only one way to heaven and it is through the blood of the Lamb of Jesus Amen. Christ. Amen. There is only one way. There's only one God. There's only one Son and there's only one Spirit. Amen. The Holy Spirit. Paul is writing to the church of Galatia. In Galatians chapter 4 verse 4 and 5 simply says this. When the fullness of time has come God sent forth His Son made a woman made under, to, under the law to redeem them that were under the law, that we might receive the adoption of sons. I begin to think about that, and I begin to look up some different commentaries, and Matthew Poole's commentary caught my eye, and he simply said this, that the fullness of man was, was when the time came in which God had designed to bring His people into the most perfect state of liberty, which is the life that they're capable of. of. I begin to think about that, and I put it in my own definition Amen. I think the fullness of time was the point in time when God said, this is the appointed time that my son is going to redeem all of mankind. It began the fullness of time. I believe that fullness of time was set back in Genesis chapter 3 at the fall of man. Amen. When man fell, God began to make a plan of redemption for all of mankind. We see the plan laid out in Genesis chapter number 3 and verse number 15. God is pronouncing a curse upon the upon the a Lucifer, amen, in the form of a, of a snake. I mean, he's pronouncing a curse upon him. And here's what he says. I will put an end to me between thee and a woman, and between thy seed and her seed, and it shall bruise thy head, and he shall bruise thy heel. Amen. I want to let you know tonight, amen, that Jesus Christ is he that put Satan under our feet. Amen. We are blood bought. We are the church that is on the rise. Amen. We're not going down. We're going up. Somebody shout Amen. There's no reason for us to look down. Amen. For look up thy head, for thy redemption draweth nigh. The psalmist Amen. would say in Psalms chapter 71, and verse number 23, he said, My lips shall greatly rejoice when I sing unto thee, my soul, which thou hast redeemed. In another place, he said, Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all the sin me bless his holy name. How can I bless the Lord? Well, I tell you, I can bless the Lord because I've been redeemed. I've got a reason to 
bless my Lord. I've got a reason to rejoice for my lips because I am the redeemed. And you are the redeemed. And it's time for the church of God to stand up and say we are the redeemed. And let us say so. Satan may come and he may try to destroy, but God is coming to build up. Amen. How will you never think that the, that the canker worm and the locusts have taken away? God can restore. He can restore families. He can restore marriages. He can restore homes. He can restore backslidden children, husbands and wives, communities, nations. He can restore this world. And there's going to come a time when the citizenship, amen, of this world is going to pass away. And I, John, behold a new city, a city coming down from heaven, adorned like a bride. Come on, somebody needs to shout hallelujah in this place. I'm talking about being redeemed. I'm talking about going to where we belong. You don't belong in this world. You and I were born into sin. We were dead in our sins, but Jesus Christ come and freed us from that sin. In Isaiah chapter 44 and verse number 22, he said, I have blotted out as a thick cloud thy transgressions, and as a cloud thy sins return unto me, for I have redeemed thee. I thought about this the other day when I was driving. It was real foggy one day last week, and I could barely see just a couple of car lengths in front of me. I could barely see the road. And I thought about how clean. So when I thought about this, it gave me a point of reference to have. He said, as far as a thick cloud, I have blotted out your transgressions that were before me. Why? Because I have simply redeemed thee. Amen. Somebody needs to shout out from the redeemed tonight. Hallelujah. If you can't rejoice over being redeemed over your own salvation, what is it in this world that we can be happy with? I take great pleasure. Amen. Tonight in reporting to you that no longer are you bound by the chains of sin. No longer are you bound by the former things of this life. But when He sets you free, He that the Son hath made free is free indeed. We no longer have no hope for He is our hope. He gives us that blessed assurance tonight. Amen. That when we leave this world, we just transfer our citizenship from one place to the other. And nor are we bound by the law. Amen. For He has set us free from the law. For what we have sown in faith, we have received by grace. Amen. Hallelujah. And redeemed by the blood of the Lamb. Isaiah chapter 1 and verse number 18. The scripture says, Come now, let us reason together, saith the Lord, though thy sins may be as scarlet, they shall be as white as snow. Though they may be red like crimson, he said, they shall be as wool. When I was in my sin, I was dead in my sin. But now I am freed unto life. And he that was resurrected and gave us life, he has given us a new citizenship. This is not where I belong. I belong with my father. I belong with his son. I with his sweet spirit. I can sing a song and you can sing a song that we are the redeemed of the Lord. The angels can't sing that song. They don't know how it feels to be redeemed. But for you and I, we have hope tonight because we are a part of the redeemed church. Bought by the blood of Jesus. In Romans chapter number 11, the word tells us, read the whole chapter. It tells us that the Gentiles were grafted in. And when we're now adopted some, we're heirs and joint heirs through Jesus Christ, our Lord. I tell you, we need to shout tonight. Amen. If it were not for the rejection of the Jews of Jesus, amen, tonight, we would have no hope. But where there was no hope, all of a sudden, through a dark sky, a ray of hope came in the form of Amen. Jesus. Amen. And now we have been redeemed by His blood. Amen. Hallelujah. Because we're saved by grace, salvation we have received. Uh, Paul began to write in 2 Corinthians uh, chapter number 5. He's given us a promise uh, tonight. Uh, for he says, For we know that our earthly vessels, our houses of this tabernacle were dissolved. We have a building of God, a house not made with hands, uh, eternal in the heavens. Uh, my Lord, I don't 
understand why you're not happy tonight. I'm telling you, when this old dead, decayed body is roared down into the ground, there's going to come a new spirit and a new body that shall be reunited in heaven with our Lord and Savior. He that created this old mortal body. This body's going to put on immortality. This spirit's going to be reunited with hope, with love and peace and joy. Hallelujah. There shall we live with him forever. Hallelujah. Fact is, we may reside in Greenwood, South Carolina. We may be a, a citizen of the greatest nation in this world, the United States of America. But I tell you, I don't put hope in the United States of America. I don't put hope in the leaders of this world. I tell you, this world is going down. But the church of God's right and high. Amen. See the righteous forsaken, nor his seed make bread. Hallelujah to the Lamb of God. Hallelujah. Those who are looking, those who are part of the redeemed, are looking to a new citizenship. One day, man, when I was born in America, I received a social security card. That social security card has tied me to the federal government. It's given me citizenship. I tell you, when I accepted Christ as my Savior, I received a new card. Amen. And it didn't have a number written on by some printer. It didn't have a number that was jot it down in some computer. Oh no. It was written by the blood of Jesus. Hallelujah. Redeemed by His blood. Bought by a price. And now I can live forevermore. Amen. Hallelujah. There was a song that once said this. This whole world is filled with disappointments and troubles every day. <clears throat> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Many times I get discouraged and I'm almost lost my way. Then I remember I'm just a pilgrim in this troubled world below. That's the reason I keep singing as I go. We're not home yet, children. Keep your eyes on the Savior. Just a few more days to labor and we'll sit down beside the river. How we long to be with Jesus and our loved ones gone before us. There's a better day coming. We're not home yet. I tell you, children, we're not home yet. But soon we will be there. There is a condition of the citizenship. Number one, the number one condition that we have is we must repent. That word repent means to turn around. If you want to see the citizenship of heaven, you've got to turn around and repent of our ways. John preached it in Matthew's Gospel, chapter number three, and verse number two. John the Baptist is preaching, and he says this Repent to ye, for the kingdom of God is at hand. Just a few days later, he would be down beside the river and all of a sudden the river Jordan, that old muddy river and all of a sudden the Lamb of God that taketh away the sins of this world would come and say baptize me and John would say I'm not even worthy to unloose those your shoes and he said you must baptize me and he baptized Jesus and the word of God said that a dove came down and the spirit came down in the form of a dove and it lit upon him and a voice came from heaven that said this is my beloved son and whom I am well pleased hear him and there Jesus began to speak and he was driven to the wilderness by the spirit and there he received temptation for 40 days and 40 nights and yet he sinned not I tell you what her job now is in prison and Jesus is in Matthew's gospel and Matthew or Mark's gospel chapter number 1 and verse number 15 John is in prison he'll never come out of that prison again and Jesus would record these words. He said the time is fulfilled and the kingdom of God is at hand. Repent ye and believe the gospel. That word gospel simply means the good news. Jesus came to bring us good news. Though we may die in this world, I tell you I've got a greater place I'm looking forward to. I've got a better home. Oh come on somebody shout. I reside at 110 Boston Lane. Oh Oh, but I tell you what, my body may reside there, but my spirit is constantly thriving. It is constantly saying, I want to go home. This is not where I belong. Hallelujah. Amen. 
The second thing we must do to receive the citizenship. The first thing is repent. The second thing is believe. In Romans chapter 10, verse number 9, through verse number 11, Paul is writing and he said, If thou will confess with thy mouth and believe in thy heart that God hath raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. For with the heart man believeth unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. For the scripture said, Whosoever waiteth on him shall not be ashamed. I am so disappointed in the church world of today. People want to keep their Christianity under their hats in the closets. Come on, somebody shout with me. Hallelujah. But if you're ashamed of him down here, he said, I'll be ashamed of you before the Father. We don't serve what God. He commanded us. He said, go ye out and preach and teach. He said, go you out to all the world. I don't keep my Christianity in my house. It is not in a prayer closet somewhere. When I go out, I'm the same as I am here. Hallelujah. When I'm home, I'm the same as I am here. It's time that we repent and we confess. Amen. And we believe. Amen. It's time we turn around. Hallelujah. And come to God. The third thing tonight is we need to sin no more. Jesus is coming out to the pool of Bethesda. There's a man there's a name, and he said, "What?" Uh, and, and, and he's kind of paraphrasing, but he said, "What do you need me to do for you?" Uh, and instead of realizing the Son of God is standing before him, uh, he begins to look at the problem. Uh, he said, "Sure, I have no one to lower me down into the pool." And when the angel stirs up the water, he said, "There's no one to lower me down in that pool uh, that I may be healed." Uh, and he didn't realize he was talking to the problem solver. Come on, somebody shout! So often we don't realize we're talking to the problem solver. Amen. We're too busy focusing on the problem. I tell you, when David saw Goliath, he didn't see how tall he was. He didn't say, well, how am I going to bring him down? He looked at it and said, how am I going to miss him? <coughs> Amen. <coughs> Hallelujah. Jesus said, he told him, he said, pick up your bed and go. Amen. And go. Cleanse yourself in the temple. And in, in uh, Romans, or rather, in verse number 14, he said, Afterward, Jesus finding him in the temple and said, Behold, thou art made whole, but go thy way and sin no more. I tell you, we are living in a generation. You need to listen to me tonight. We are living in a generation that thinks that when they accept Christ and shed a few tears, that that's all they got to do, and that is their responsibility. But I tell you, it is a life long commitment. Uh, marriage is a commitment uh, that I'm going to forsake every woman. Uh, and hallelujah. I'm going to forsake all the ladies I used to have and all the women that will ever be in the future. And I'm going to be I'm going to be married to one woman. Amen. Uh, and that woman I'm going to live until I die. Amen. Uh, hallelujah. It is the same way when we are married into the family of God. Uh, we are forsaking everything uh, and everybody that would be in our way. Uh, whether it be family, friends, uh, hallelujah, churches, whatever it is. Uh, he is the author and the finisher of our faith uh, and we need to start believing it, preaching it, teaching it, and living it. Amen. Yeah. Hallelujah. Sin no more. Well, I can live like I want to and do what I want to. Not if you want a citizenship in this world I'm talking to you about. For Paul is writing in Romans chapter 6, verse number 1 and verse number 2. He said, what shall we say then? Shall we continue in sin because grace may abound? God forbid. For shall we that are dead to sin live there any longer? Oh, did you hear that? He said, should we continue to do the things that our former life. No, we are dead to sin. And we shall do those things no longer. If you hadn't changed, you wouldn't say it. Amen. That's right. Hallelujah. If you ain't changed, you ain't saved. If the world looks at you and they see the world, guess what? You are the world. Man, that's a popular preaching, ain't it? No. We live in a generation where a Sunday morning service looks like a Saturday night clubhouse. <laughs> Come on now. Amen. They got the drinks outside. The party's going on on the inside. The fog machines, the lights, the loud music. Come on, shout with me. That's right. It's not church. That's right. It's the world. Yes. They have no citizenship in heaven. They have not forsaken. We cannot be transformed 
by the renewing of the world. We've got to be transformed by the renewing of the mind. Come on, shout with me, church. Amen. Hallelujah, that we may prove that which is good and acceptable and the perfect will of God. I tell you tonight, if the world looks at you and you smell like the world, you look like the world, my friend, you are the world. Amen. When's the last time someone has come to you and said, you something different about you? Oh, come on, shout with me, church. Hallelujah. There's something different about you. I tell you, if no one's told you that, then there's probably a reason. Because you smell like the world. You look like the world. You are of this world. Oh, but Jesus said, you cannot be of this world. For this world is the world of the devil. You are children of your father, the devil. But he that is free from sin is a, is a child of God. Amen. It's all good. We belong to God. Our citizenship is in the Lord. No longer. Well, these dead, decaying mortal bodies be a problem. For in verse 21 of our text, he said, Who shall change over our bodies that it may be fashioned unto this glory of body? Hold on a little bit, old child. We belong to him. Our citizenship's not here. You think about how much, if you have all that money, think about what you could do. All that money. You wouldn't do nothing but bring more problems. That's right. For the rich man, it's easier right? for a camel to go through an eye of a needle than a rich man to enter into the kingdom of God. You think about that. You see, even the wealthy folks, they got they have problems. They don't have money problems, but they've got problems. That's right. You can't escape this life, and this citizenship in this life from the problems of this life. But there's a life coming, church. We're not going to have all these problems anymore. And close it tonight. Amen. He bought you. He paid for you. And our reward is in heaven. In Matthew chapter 25, the last scripture of the night, Matthew 25 and 21, says, And his Lord said, Well done, thy good and faithful servant. Thou hast been faithful over a few things. I will make thee a ruler over many. Enter into the joy of the Lord. Amen. Our citizenship right then will be cast in. Amen? That's right. We'll enter into the joys of the Lord. Church, you've got something to be happy about tonight. I'm talking to a Wednesday night crowd, and for the most part, most of us are ready to meet the Lord. There's some that are not ready. If in this small Wednesday night, you're not ready. You've slipped back into the citizenship of this world. You took put down your card. At one time you might have been ready, but you put your card down. Your spiritual citizenship you put to the side, and you laid it on the side, and you picked up a worldly citizenship and said, I'd rather be a part of the pleasures of this world. But I want to remind you tonight, pleasures are for a season. There's a payday coming. You think about it. If I were to give you $10,000 and tell you you could spend it, but in a year's time, I spent it $20,000 cash, or I was going to keep it. A lot of folks would pick up that $10,000 in hopes in a year they could pay back $20,000 to realize that on the 11th month and the 30th day going into that, Twelfth month, they didn't have a time left. Think about this. And for a whole
or I picked up the, or put down the world and I picked up a citizenship and said, I am free. I am free indeed. Every head bowed, maybe I close. Tonight I ask you a simple question. Have you let your guard down? Have you let sin come in and creep in your life and steal? Where do you belong? Where do you belong? Are you going to belong here when the rapture takes place or are you going over there? Is he going to look at you and say, well done, my good and faithful servant. You've been faithful over a few things. I'm going to make you rule over many entering into the joy. Or is he going to say, depart from me, you work over iniquity. I never knew you.